Coaster enthusiasts are always looking for credits. We will go to the ends of the earth to get credits, but some places are just too far. Silverwood. Hmm, no, that's in the middle of nowhere. Lagoon. Hmm, not going through northern Utah too often. The park at Oa. Does anyone pass by southern Alabama? Adrenaline Peak. The Pacific Northwest is a tough sell for coaster enthusiasts. Mindbender in Edmonton. You know, most people in Canada live right next to the U.S. border. This park is way up there. Zippin' Pippin. This may be an amazing woody, but do you know how far north Green Bay is? You really gotta commit. Cowboy Coaster at Jackson Hole in Wyoming. It's Wyoming, enough said. It might as well be in North Korea. Oh, and by the way, that also has some credits, but good luck getting those. I asked my followers on Instagram for help on this one. I got hundreds of replies, and I tallied all of them up, and I came up with this list that I'm gonna run down today. These are the 20 most challenging coaster credits. I just want to say, there are a lot of coasters out there that are hard to ride because of their location. I got a couple votes for the Dragon's Tail coaster in Haiti. You could fill a whole list of coasters in obscure countries, so I'm not looking for that. I want to find rides that are always down for maintenance, or down for laziness, or reside in parks that aren't open much. Here are a few honorable mentions. X2 got 4 votes. As someone who lived at Magic Mountain, this was open way more than it was closed. I'm sorry if you had bad luck with it, but I don't think it's top 20 worthy. Same with Accelerator. This had three votes, and being an intimate launch coaster, I'm sure it had its issues, but I go to Knott's all the time and it's always been up. Dragon Mountain at Marineland also has three votes. Not only is this in a weird location, right there on the Canadian side of Niagara Falls, it's also expensive to get into this park, and the coaster doesn't run consistently. I'm sure that's frustrating to go out of your way to drive here, pay the high admission, walk all the way to the back of the park, and see it closed. Jetstar 2 at Lagoon and Thunderbolt at Kennywood have one thing in common. They require you to ride with a partner. For all you solo riders out there, you better make friends fast or else you're out of luck. A lot of people also mention coasters you can't ride if you're over a kid's height. The one that stood out the most was Magic Flyer, but there's a lot of them out there, so I won't list all of them. There are even more coasters you can't ride without a kid, but the one that seems to make everyone the most mad is Pterodon Flyers. This had four votes, so unless you have a kid, or a little brother or sister, or niece and nephew, and please don't be weird and borrow someone else's kid, you aren't going to ride this one. There were also four coasters that got votes that aren't open anymore, but they would have definitely been on this list. Goliath at Six Flags New England got seven votes. This thing was never open before it closed in 2019. I ran into this personally in 2018, but luckily I got the ride in 2015. I guess I consider myself lucky. You always want that experience, no matter how bad it is. Batman and Robin the Chiller. This was a legendary Premier Rides launch coaster at Six Flags Great Adventure. It closed in 2007, but it was always plagued with issues. Both sides hardly ever ran together. There's a reason it didn't last more than 10 years. Harley Quinn Crazy Coaster lasted two whole seasons, and if you were able to get a ride like I was, you are a big winner. I wonder how many days out of those two years it was actually open. It seems like nobody had the chance to ride it. Last one, Flashback at Magic Mountain. This was closed all summer. Being right next to the water park, it was just too loud. It would only open in the off season, and even then, it wasn't open that much. I remember going to the park in January 2001, redeeming my first ever season pass, and riding Flashback for the first time. It hurt. Number 20 and number 19, the Aero Shuttle Loops in America, Sidewinder at Elitch Gardens and Diamondback at Frontier City. Flip a coin, heads and you get to ride, tails and you might get to ride, but you better run. I missed my one chance to ride at Elitch Gardens, and I've been in Frontier City a bunch of times. Yes, it's my new home park, shut up, I know. But anyway, Diamondback is really fun, it's just closed about half the time. Not sure if it's a maintenance thing or a staffing thing, but when I roll up to Frontier City and I see the station empty, it's a big downer. I hope they keep it, even if my chances of riding it depend on a coin toss. Number 18, Leap the Dips at Lake Mont Park. I appreciate this still being open after 120 years. Well, open enough. This closed down three times in its life, the longest one being 12 years between 1986 and 1998, and most recently from 2017 to 2020. Even now, you gotta catch it on a good day. I went to this park during one of its extended downtimes, so I missed my chance. Of course, it opened the next week, so that's just great. Number 17, Bolt, the ultimate sea coaster on the Carnival cruise ship. This is a pretty simple single rail coaster that rides around a cruise ship. This doesn't look too exciting, but it's all about the novelty of riding a coaster on a ship. The problem is, are you going to pay for a cruise and spend weeks on a cruise ship just to get one credit? The answer for me is absolutely not. But if you're hardcore, this may be a good challenge for you. Number 16, classic coaster at the Washington State Fair. You can include any coaster here, but this is the most prominent one. All fair coasters operate for a few weeks a year, but this one's special for a couple reasons. For one, it's one of the few permanent fair coasters. You're not going to find many fair coasters in RCDB, since they get packed up and moved after a month. 
Classic Coaster is always there, but it's only open for a few weeks a year. On top of this, it's in Washington State. I said it before, but I'll say it again. The Pacific Northwest is where coasters go to die. Making a trip up there during that one month in September, that takes some commitment, and it's something I was able to do in 2019. Number 15, Batwing at Six Flags America. There's only two Vacoma Flying Dutchman left, but when you consider there are only three to begin with, that's not bad. Problem is, they're unreliable. There's a lot of moving parts on that train. This leads to a lot of breakdowns. But more often than not, you're gonna come to the park and see Batwing closed altogether. I don't think the other Dutchman, Nighthawk at Carowinds, has this problem as much. I went to Six Flags America on opening weekend in 2019 and I got to ride it, but my first trip in 2008, I wasn't as lucky. Number 14, Wild Mouse at Idlewild. I admit, I fell into this trap. I had no idea how rare this was to open. We got to the park during a rainstorm. It cleared up, but Wild Mouse was still down. Apparently, it doesn't run in the slightest bad weather. Everyone told me I was wasting my time and this hardly ever opens, but I wasn't going to give up. I came back the next day, waited about 30 minutes after the park opened, and I was able to ride it. It was a good ride, thankfully. I don't think I've ever been more patient to get a credit. If you make it here, just be careful. It's expensive to get in, and if you're unlucky, the only coaster you'll get to ride is Roller Coaster. Number 13, Alpine Bobsled at Great Escape. This intimate bobsled has been relocated twice, and has found a long-term home at Great Escape over the last 24 years. I got here last summer, being told there's no way it would be open, and for most of the day, it wasn't. But midday, they started testing it and threw open those gates, and I got a rare credit. When I posted that I rode the Alpine bobsled, I felt like a king. I never have good luck with this stuff, and here I was, getting a rare credit. I'm not sure why this has never opened, if it's maintenance, or if it's finicky with the weather, or if it's staffing, but it's normally a lawn ornament. Number 12. The Access Prototype at the SNS headquarters in Utah. You have to be one of the cool kids to ride this. It's not at a park, it's just something that SNS built to test out. You have to be selected to ride it. SNS will tell you if you're allowed to come and get on. Though I did hear, if you buy a bunch of chocolate, you might find the golden ticket to get in. But now that I think about it, that might have been Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. I can't remember. Anyway, I did get the call to ride this in 2020, but at the same time, I was on my own coaster trip, so this is not on my credit list. Number 11, Blue Flash, the famous backyard coaster. For over 10 years, this operated at John Ivers house in Indiana. You had to have special permission to come onto his property and ride it. That seems fair enough, but it makes it a tough credit to get. Well, in 2019, he didn't want to deal with it anymore. And with the help of Coaster Studios, the ride was sold to the Haunted Hoochie in Ohio. I'm not sure if this has been operating there or not, but even so, it's only open during the Halloween months of September and October. I guess that means it's easier to ride now, but you still gotta time it right. Okay, on to the top 10. And just a note, everything in my top 10 got at least 4 votes. Number 10. Monster at La Ronde. This is a dual track woody with a bad reputation. It's apparently not a great ride, and based on what I'm seeing here, I believe it. That may be part of the reason it's closed so often. As for the dueling, just forget it. There's a lot of old dual track coasters that can't justify both sides being open, and that's the case here also. But apparently, even opening is too much to ask for most of the time. This is also at La Ronde, so not a lot of enthusiasts are able to get here in the first place. Number 9. King to Ka at Six Flags Great Adventure. It's an intimate accelerator, using a hydraulic launch. Good luck with this one. I've had pretty good luck, personally, but the last time I was at the park, we had just gotten in line when it broke. It's no surprise to me that the world's tallest and second fastest coaster has issues with downtime. The ride is so powerful, but with great power comes great responsibility to stay open, but it can't be bothered with Spider-Man logic. Number 8. Olympia Looping at Wiener Prater. This is an impressive portable coaster, the largest one in the world. It gets taken apart every few years, being rebuilt somewhere else. With over 4,100 feet of track and 5 loops, that's not a small amount of track to take out and put back up. Your challenge, if you choose to accept it, is to hit this up when you're in town, and it's also in town. It looks like it's worth your time. You're not going to find a Schwarzkopf with 5 inversions anywhere else. Number 7. Sandy's Blasting Bronco at American Dream. When they say annual maintenance, you may think they take it down once a year. It seems like what they really mean is they're taking it down for a whole year. I've been here twice and I'm 0 for 2. I'm not alone. It got 6 votes in my poll, so a lot of people must have came by during that annual maintenance. The ride really looks good. Kind of like a good version of a Skyland Skywarp, and apparently it's really intense. Number 6. Lightning Rod at Dollywood. I'll give credit where credit is due. Dollywood and RMC have been working hard to make this more reliable. I guess it has been running better and has more uptime after getting all that steel iBox track. For the first 5 years of its life, this couldn't stay open for more than a few minutes at a time. I had a trip planned there in June 2016, and I was so lucky it opened 2 days before I got there. I was also lucky to get one ride after it opened. After we left, it wasn't open much longer. In 2018, I came back and it was down for months, and then they took it down one more time for the retrack. 
Putting a launch lift hill on a wooden coaster is very ambitious, and it turns out maybe a little too much. Great ride, but always a roll of the dice. Number five, flying turns at Knobles. I was 0 for 2 on Sandy's Blasting Bronco, but I'm an even worse 0 for 3 on flying turns. The first time it was raining, and this has a bobsled trough, so it makes sense it can't run when it's wet. The second time, it was being torn apart, so that makes sense. The third time, I was there on a busy Sunday, but it was down because of staffing. This takes a large crew to run, and it's among the first to close when staffing gets tight. This took them eight years to build, and it was such a huge passion project. It's just a shame it's been so hard to get onto. Number four, the Flash Vertical Velocity at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. This coaster got seven votes, and I, for one, have run into this problem myself. My 2018 trip was the first time I've been to the park since 2001, the first time I would get to ride this all crooked, and of course, it was down. Some people thought as much as this ride was down, it would be torn out, but then the park painted it, themed it to the Flash, and I came back in 2019 and it was open. I consider myself very lucky to ride this one-of-a-kind impulse, but if you hit up this park, just don't count on being that lucky. Number three, Desperado at Buffalo Bills Resort and Casino. When you're driving through the California desert, heading for Vegas, you see the beauty of Prim Nevada on the horizon, and rising above all of it is that faded yellow arrow hyper. I'm old enough to remember when this was open all the time. I even did a weekend trip where I stayed at Buffalo Bills and rode this 10 times in a row. Nowadays, you're lucky to see this in action. It's not dead. It's been testing, and they plan on reopening it after over two years. But even before the latest shutdown, you were lucky to catch a ride. It's only open certain times of the year, certain times of the day. So you had to plan your trip to Vegas and get there at the right time. Even if you did everything right, sometimes you still came up empty. It's no wonder this got 11 votes in the poll. Number two, Top Thrill Dragster at Cedar Point. Now we're getting serious. Dragster got 21 votes. For a park as visited as Cedar Point, a lot of people have felt the pain of Top Thrill downtime. Intamin did a lot to make this work in the first place, and almost 20 years later, it's still plagued with problems. Usually, the problems are with the launch system. In 2021, a piece of the train flew off and seriously injured a bystander. The old CEO of Cedar Fair called the project a big mistake. It may be a huge rush, but I can't justify waiting in line for it. Unless you have fast lane, or you can get on within 10 minutes, you run a high risk of being stuck in line during a breakdown. There have been a few trips to Cedar Point where it's been down the whole day, or when I go over to ride it, it breaks down. You gotta plan ahead and get lucky. Number one, Teddy Bear and Tornado at Stricker's Grove. Leading the pack with 25 votes, you have these two coasters at the famous Stricker's Grove in Ohio. This is a private picnic park, and it's only open to the public four days a year. Those days aren't even together. They're scattered all around. You got the 4th of July, the second Sunday in August, Labor Day, and then Customer Appreciation Day in October. If you don't live close, you have to really plan around this park's schedule. I was going to an ACE event there in 2020, but then you know what happened and it got canceled. So I've never been there. Maybe I'll make a point to get there this year, or maybe not, who knows. Depends on what I'm doing those specific four days of the year. That's it for the hardest credits to get, according to my Instagram followers at least. Thanks to everyone who sent me an answer. And if you didn't see something on the list, that means it didn't get more than two votes. So I'm sorry. Let me know which coasters you've had the hardest time getting on. For me, flying turns takes the cake. I think I'm cursed with that thing. Before you go, don't forget to drop a like and give me a sub for more content just like this. Also check out my links below for my Discord server and my second channel where I post copyright free off ride footage and my baseball channel if you happen to be a baseball freak like I am. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.